This is sixth grade Excel lesson number one. We're going to learn about all different kinds of things on this lesson. And so what you want to do is pay real close attention, pause the video anytime that you're confused, and go back to the part that you were confused on. You can watch it as many times as you want to. I'm going to be telling you to pause the video every once in a while. You need to do that. You need to make sure that you are trying the problems that I ask you to try before I show you the answers. Yes, you could simply copy the answers down from the video, but you're not going to learn anything from doing that, and you're going to end up getting so far behind in math, it's just going to be super frustrating for you. So make sure you follow my directions on the, on the lessons. I know what I'm doing here. I know how to teach this to you and get you to learn it, as long as you follow along with me. If you try to do it on your own, your own way of doing things, you're going to get behind. I know from experience, and you're going to get very frustrated. So please just follow along, follow directions. should go pretty easily for you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these first problems. Uh, you should have a paper in front of you, an Excel lesson number one in front of you. It looks just like my paper. I'm gonna guide you through it. Uh, don't go ahead of where I am on the video, but don't get behind either and, and just copy things. So numbers one and two are asking you to write the numbers that are described here. Number one has two hundred thousands, seven tens, eight ones, nine thousands, and, and three hundreds. Okay, what I would like you to do is pause the video and see if you can write this number. This should be review for you at this point in time. So I'm not going to show you how to do it. Just pause the video, try it out, write the answer right here on this line of what you think that number is. Don't forget to put your zeros in where there is no place and no number mentioned here. And then after you've written the answer right here, turn the video back on and then I will do the problem and you'll see if you got it right or not. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, what you should have done is you've got two hundred thousands, so we're going to put a two down here. That means we've got two more spots to go, and then a comma, and then three spots. Seven tens, that would be in the tens place right over here. Eight ones, and nine thousands, the thousands place is of course right before that comma there, and three hundreds. Now the number that's missing in here is it does not mention any ten thousands. So you should have put a zero there and gotten 209,378. Again, don't forget those zeros if they don't mention the place value. All right, go ahead and do number two. Uh, the way that this is done is they write the words out that says the number. This is the way the number is actually said. This last one, the digits were all mixed up. This is not mixed up. It's just telling you how to actually write the number. So pause the video, see if you can make a guess at it down here on the line. Turn the video back on when you're ready to see what the solution is. All right, you should have had, uh, should have written 651,000. That means you write 651,000. The word thousand means put a comma in there. And then 830. So you should have written 830 after the comma. So there's your solution right there. If those look a little confusing for you, you might want to ask me about it tomorrow in class because these should be reviewed for you. Ordinal numbers indicate where an item is located in relation to others in the same set. Felipe was waiting in line at the movie theater. He counted the number of people ahead of him in the line. He was the 53rd, there's the key term right there, person in line. How many people were ahead of him? Well, if he's 53rd person in line, how many people are in front of him? Go ahead and write your answer. See if you can beat me uh, before I write it. Okay, the answer would be 52. And then we put a label with this type of an answer because it's a word problem. So you should put the word people after that. All right, this next section, we're just going to be adding, subtracting, and multiplying. So uh, again, this should be review for you. I'd like you to go ahead and do four through number nine. Pause the video as you're doing those. Turn it back on when you're ready to see what the solutions are. All right, here we go. Number four, you should have already done this problem. Four plus seven is 11. 2 plus 3 is 5, 11 and 5 makes 16, carry the 1. 9 plus 6 is 15, and 9 plus 6 is 15 down here. So 15 and 15 makes 30, put a 0 and carry the 3. Here we have 6, 8, and then there's no carry, so we have 4. 4,806. Now in this next one, you can't do 0 minus 5. And there's a little trick that I have for when we have to regroup from zeros. I box off that number and make that the number 500. So you might want to try this. Uh, I'll explain it to you later and actually there's a separate video all on this idea on, on uh, our website. But you're going to cross out the 500. I'm actually borrowing from a 500 
And so that 500 becomes 499, and I take that one away from the 500, put it there, which is actually 110, and I put the one next to the zero, making that number 10. 10 minus five is five, nine minus three is six, nine minus five is four, and four minus one is three. So the answer is 3,465. You only use that trick when you're going to borrow from a zero that's next door, not in any borrowing situation. Five minus two is three here. Zero minus five, I can't do it. I'm gonna regroup and make that a seven. That becomes 10, 10 minus five is five, seven minus four is three, and nine minus three is six. All right, here's a multiplication problem. Two times five is 10, carry the one. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21. Carry the two, nine times five is 45, plus two is 47. Another multiplication problem, one times eight is eight. Eight times eight is 64. Six times eight is 48, plus six is 54. Uh, if you don't know your times tables, it'd be a real good idea to work on those because you're gonna need them a lot. Nine times seven is 63, carry the six. Six times seven is 42, plus six is 48, carry the four. Four times seven is 28, plus four is 32, 3,283. A multiple is the result of multiplying two numbers. Some of the multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, and 10. Some of the multiples are five, are five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Multiples are skip counting. They're the numbers that we say when we sing our math songs. It's the numbers that you say when you do skip counting. Which set shows multiples of 12? Well, six is not a multiple of 12, so it couldn't be this set of numbers. 12, 24, 36, 48. Hey, those are all multiples of 12, so I circle that. These are not multiples of 12. Those are actually called factors of 12, except for this one. These numbers can be divided into 12, but they don't, they're not the numbers that we would say when we skip count 12s, so that couldn't be it. And then 12, 20, 12 is a multiple of 12, but not 20, not 30, and not 44. So this couldn't be it either. I want you to go ahead and try number 11 on your own. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. It says, which set, set shows multiples of three? Well, three, six, nine, 12, 15. Oh, that's not working. Seven is not a multiple of three. Some of you might have gotten tricked by this because each number adds three to the previous number, but these are not numbers that we would say when we skip count by three. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. These are all multiples of 3. And again over here, 11, 14, those are not multiples of 3, so that would not be the solution. All right, moving on, now we're going to take a look at some word problems. Matilda would like to plant four different herbs in each of her five gardens. Which equation shows how many herbs she will need? If she's going to plant four herbs, there's her four herbs, and this is one garden, and then she's going to do that five different times, kind of a clue there, then obviously we would not be adding four and five. And I could keep going to show you this five different times. There's her five gardens. And what we're doing is we're taking the number four and we're multiplying it by five. The number nine right here at the beginning, in case you haven't done Excel before, goes in your check answer. Uh, Alec threw 26 sticks to his dog on Monday and 13 on Tuesday. 12 of the sticks got lost in the bushes, so the dog couldn't bring them back. So how many sticks did his dog bring back? I'd like you to pause the video, see if you can do this problem. You need to show your work down here, show the addition, multiplication, subtraction, whatever kind of problem you're doing down here, and then write your answer only on that line right there. Okay, pause the video, give it a shot, then turn it back on. So he threw 26 sticks on Monday and 13 on Tuesday. So that means he threw 39 altogether and 12 of them got lost in the bushes so you should have subtracted 12 and gotten 27. And you need to put a label with this. Two very important things about word problems. You need to show your work and you need to have a label or a word that goes with your number answer. You must do that on all word problems for me this year in math. A picture frame cost 51 cents. Amber gave the clerk a dollar. How much was her change? Again, go ahead and show your work here. Put the answer there. Pause the video. Turn it back on when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so if she gave the clerk a dollar and it cost 51 cents, you're doing a dollar minus 51, which is 49 because we have to regroup. 10 minus 1 is 9, minus 9 minus 1 is 4. So the answer is 49 cents, or you can write the answer like this. You cannot write the answer like that. 
No cent sign with decimal point, not allowed. Either one of these is okay. All right, go ahead and read number 15, pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. Eddie has eight nickels, six dimes and three quarters. How much money does he have? Well, eight nickels would be 40 cents, right? Because that's eight times five. Six dimes, of course, is 60 cents and three quarters is 75 cents. What you need to do is write these down just like this, add it up to show your answer and make sure you put a dollar sign with your answer. You must have this, you must have the dollar sign. So fix your paper right now if you did it wrong. Okay, this next part is, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do it a little differently than what they show you here on the paper. So pay real close attention. We're gonna be looking at how to give change for things. It says using the fewest coins. Anytime you see fewest coins, you're gonna do QDNP on your paper, QDNP. I want that written on your paper every time you see a word problem that asks you for the fewest coins. It says, how many dimes are there in 23 cents? You start with the quarters. How many quarters can we put into 23 cents? Zero. Go ahead and write this on your paper as I'm doing it with you. How many dimes can we put into 23 cents? Well, two to make 20 cents. How many nickels? Well, this is at 20 cents, so we're gonna put zero nickels in. And how many pennies? Three. Notice I started with quarters, then I went to dimes, then nickels, then pennies. You must go in that order because we wanna use the fewest coins possible. To make 23 cents, I could use 23 pennies, right? Well, that's 23 coins, and over here I'm only using five coins. I have to use the fewest coins possible. It says how many dimes, so the answer is two or two dimes. All right, you should have this written on your paper right here before you go on. Go ahead and pause the video and try number 17 on your own, then turn it back on when you're ready to see the solution. Again, using the fewest coins, so we're gonna write QDNP, QDNP, and it says, how many nickels are there in 43 cents? Well, how many quarters can I get in? I always start with the quarters. That would be one, because uh, if I use two, it's 50 cents. That's too many. How many dimes? 25, 35, another dime, 45, two dimes. That's too much, so I'm only going to use one dime. I'm at 35 cents. If I use one nickel, I'll be at 40, and then three pennies makes 43. How many nickels did I use? The answer is one nickel. Okay, you're going to do the same thing again on number 18. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. Okay, again, it's a QDNP problem. Fewest coins, write this out. How many quarters are in 58 cents? Two quarters makes 50 cents. I can't put a dime in. One nickel makes 55, and three pennies makes 58. So the answer is two quarters. All right, thanks for watching.